Imagine having a big 32 inch monitor, but with the same sharpness and image quality as the MacBook Pro Retina screen, and without having to sell a kidney to buy the Pro Display XDR. Sorry, did I say imagine? Because it's already here. This is the ASUS ProArt PA32 QCV, a 32 inch 6K resolution monitor with one cable MacBook and Thunderbolt 4 connectivity and designed specifically to match your MacBook Pro screen. The question is though, is it actually a good monitor or is it just a cheap knockoff with several big deal breakers? Also, this review is not sponsored by ASUS in any way. They're not paying me any money. It's entirely my own thoughts and opinions. So why 6K and not a 4K monitor or one of these new 5K monitors that came out this year? Well, it all comes down to the size of the screen and the resolution, right? Some people, for whatever reason, including myself, just prefer a larger screen. But historically, uh, a larger screen generally comes with some negatives, and one of those negatives is reduced sharpness of content on the screen. So things like text and UI elements, for example, are going to be noticeably less sharp and blurrier. Same with photos and videos and design elements being displayed on screen. This is because if you go from a 4K 27 inch monitor to a 4K 32 inch monitor, for example, you have the exact same resolution, AKA amount of pixels, but they're now spread out to cover a larger screen area. Now, Apple uses the term retina when referring to their MacBook screens. It's essentially a fancy marketing term to describe a screen where the individual pixels are no longer visible when sitting the typical distance away. So for a laptop where you would typically sit a little bit closer to the screen in comparison to say a monitor, uh, maybe 1.5 to two feet away. Uh, and then for a monitor, as long as you're sitting about an arm's length away, you won't be able to see any individual pixels. Now this retina rating requires a PPI or the number of pixels per inch on the screen to be around 218. Now a 32 inch 4K monitor has a pretty bad PPI of around 137, which is going to be noticeably less sharp than say a 4K 27 inch monitor. But when you bump that resolution up to 6K, you can see it's right on that 218 PPI requirement for Retina. In fact, the ASUS has the exact same resolution and PPI as the $5,000 Apple Pro Display XDR. Now for Mac users specifically, a 6K resolution has the additional benefit of scaling perfectly within macOS. Unlike of course, 4K, which does not. And as a result has a relatively unnoticeable slight blurriness and pixelation around UI elements and text. I go into way more detail on this on my review of the 27 inch version of this monitor and I will link that review down in the description. So why a 32 inch screen over something like a 27 inch screen? It's pretty simple. I can just fit more stuff on a 32 inch screen. Now I'm not necessarily talking about say productivity oriented workflows like you know, having four different windows open at the same time, although you definitely can do that. It's more so aimed at programs that have a lot of elements within them. So think of creative or design software like Lightroom or DaVinci Resolve, for example, where you have a lot of different elements that you need to see and have frequent access to, like audio panels for monitoring, media pool to browse video clips or images, effects. And you ideally want all of these things open at the same time on the same screen and be able to see and use them easily. And it's not like this is impossible on a 27 inch screen. It's just better on a larger 32 inch screen. You can kind of see this extra space in this example. Now the 27 inch ProArt monitor is on the left and I have the exact same app open. The 32 inch just feels more spacious and I have more control over which areas I want to resize and make easier to see. Now the design and build quality is almost identical to the 27 inch version I reviewed previously. You get the same solid but kind of cheap looking black plastic chassis with the big bottom bezel and shortcut buttons and control joystick. But overall, I was pretty happy with the quality. Now the stand is also quite sturdy but the bottom plate is quite big to keep that heavy 32 inch screen stable. And there's the usual adjustments, height, swivel, tilt, portrait mode, uh, or Visa on the back if you prefer to mount it to a monitor arm instead. Plus the power supply is built in, so no bulky power brick required, just a power cable. Now this is obviously a laptop oriented monitor, so it also has USB-C one cable connectivity. The included USB-C Thunderbolt 4 cable connects the laptop to a monitor and provides up to 96 watts of charging capability. It also outputs a 6K 60 Hertz image and lets you access devices like speakers or mouse dongles, etc., connected to the monitor via the USB hub. 
I'll put all the ports up on the screen now so you can pause if you want to take a closer look. Now, unlike the 27 inch 5K version of this monitor, the 32 inch version comes with a Thunderbolt 4 hub. Now, is it a true Thunderbolt 4 hub experience? No. The main reason ASUS had to make it Thunderbolt 4 is because of the amount of data required to transmit a 6K image 60 times a second through a single USB-C cable uh, on top of any USB devices that are also connected and using that bandwidth, like, you know, an external drive, for example. Actual Thunderbolt 4 connectivity is limited. I tried attaching my super fast Thunderbolt external SSD to the Thunderbolt 4 port to the left of the laptop USB-C port and noticed the write speed was significantly slower compared to attaching the SSD directly to my Mac. The main use case for this Thunderbolt 4 port is actually going to be for those who want to daisy chain an additional monitor. Side note, there are built-in speakers, but they are awful. But overall, the built-in dock, while not exactly comprehensive, and you know, certainly not as comprehensive as the Dell UltraSharp range, uh, it worked well. Like I didn't have any issues. I didn't have any devices dropping out. I was able to connect all of my basic accessories. And it also really helps in keeping my desk clean. There's not an external hub sitting on the desk with you know cables going everywhere, for example. It's all in the back of the monitor and it's nice and neat. It also has the same KVM switch as the 27 inch version. So you can easily switch between a Mac and Windows computer, for example, and keep using the same keyboard and mouse. And yes, if you're wondering, the 6K resolution works perfectly fine on Windows computers. Now, speaking of Windows, if you have a Mac and you ever need to use Windows, maybe to run a specific app that isn't compatible or is not available on Mac OS, you can use something called Parallels to run Windows directly on your Mac. I've been featuring and using Parallels on this channel for five years at this point. I use it myself and recently Parallels for Mac has received a massive update. And really big thanks to Parallels for supporting my work on this channel for so long and sponsoring this section of the video. Parallels Desktop for Mac version 26 is now out and features updated support for newly released macOS Tahoe, along with a new and updated look to match. Version 26 is fully optimized for macOS Tahoe and supports Windows 11 25H2. Alongside the ability to run Windows 11 and over 200,000 Windows applications on your Mac and use these apps within macOS via coherence mode as if they were native Mac apps, Version 26 has a bunch of helpful new features for IT admins and businesses. I'll leave a link below to the Parallels Desktop 26 launch blog so you can read all about the new updates. And don't forget to use code LIAM35 to get 35% off Parallels for Mac. Now in terms of screen and color accuracy, the PA32 QCV screen is almost identical to the 27 inch version I reviewed previously. IPS panel, 10 bit color with HDR10, very color accurate across a number of gamuts, and the factory calibrated Kalman verified panel. Now it is only a 60 Hertz panel, and I know some people are going to race down to the comment section and say something like, oh, it's 2025, I'm not buying a 60 Hertz panel. Look, I totally get it. I personally prefer 120 Hertz, but uh, the reality is a 6K 120 Hertz panel simply does not exist at the moment, and it probably won't for a while. Uh, and also that being said, if you're buying a monitor like this, you're gonna be looking at mainly static content all day. So you're not really gonna be able to take advantage of that you know, 120 Hertz refresh rate, even if there was one. Now it also has the same matte Lux Pixel AGLR or anti-glare low reflection surface as the 27 inch. You can check my review of the 27 inch for more details on that if you want. Backlight bleed is something all IPS panels suffer from. Uh, I didn't really have any major issues with my panel and didn't notice it significantly during any dark scenes. Brightness was also more than adequate for my home office, which has a lot of ambient light. Uh, I typically only have it set at about 50 to 60%. Fun fact, you can use ASUS's new Display Widget Center app for macOS to change the monitor brightness using your Mac keyboard shortcuts. Quick side note here, there is an optional accessory ASUS sells called the ProArt Kali Control. It attaches to the computer and its primary function is to act as a control hub for the monitor. So I can easily change things like, you know, color profiles or other settings. But I can also take off the rear cover and surprise, it's also a colorometer. So I can check the color accuracy of my monitor or even calibrate it if I need to. Now this is not a purchase I would recommend for the average user. It's only for those of us where color accuracy is really important 
and you either need to check accuracy or calibrate your monitor. And yes, the colorometer function works with monitors from other brands. Asus's big change with the PA32 QCV though is the introduction of their new M model P3 color preset mode to match the monitor's colors with the colors of the MacBook Pro's retina screen. I can access this mode either using the control buttons on the monitor or the display widget center app. Side by side with my M4 Pro MacBook Pro, which has the nano texture coating to match the ASUS's anti-glare screen, uh, this is definitely the closest color match I've seen on any non-Apple monitor so far. Now there will be some very minor color differences out of the box. Uh, the main reason for that is the brightness settings and levels on these two are gonna be just very slightly different. Uh, and also the MacBook is using mini LED technology versus just normal LED technology on the Asus. But even then, like I really had to have them both side by side and look really closely at specific things to tell the difference. Personally, I could really only see the difference when looking at mainly skin tones. Uh, the MacBook had slightly more contrast and saturation versus the Asus. So I spent a few minutes making very slight tweaks to brightness, contrast, and saturation levels on the Asus and was able to get it to 98% of the way to perfectly matching the MacBook. But overall, I had no problem color grading on the ASUS screen and being confident that the final product would look the same on the MacBook screen. So the ASUS PA32 JCV's retail price is $1,299. However, at the time of this video, I believe due to the tariff shenanigans going on in the US, uh, it's actually increased by 100 bucks to $1,399. Uh, now, I'm not sure if that price will go down again or maybe there'll be some sales on in the not too distant future. So what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description below. If you're looking to pick up one of these monitors, I will keep that link updated with the best price or deals that I could find for this monitor. Now $12.99 or $13.99, whatever it ends up being at first glance, seems like a lot of money, but I actually think it's a great deal because you have to compare it to the other options out there. First of all, if you want a 32 inch 6K monitor, Really the only other options are the Dell UltraSharp U3224KB, which costs 3,000 US dollars. Uh, the Kaikon G32P for about $1,900 with the stand included. And of course the Pro Display XDR from Apple starting at 5,000 US dollars, stand not included. Which technically can't really be compared to the ASUS even though it is also 6K and 32 inches because that monitor is mainly for specific professional workflows. There is also the LG Ultrafine 32U990A. Uh, it was announced at CES 2025, but as of the date of this video, there's been no additional information released on that monitor. No release date, uh, no pricing or anything like that. If I had to guess, I'd say it's gonna be around the same price point as the Kaikon, so between 1,800 to maybe 2,000 US dollars, but certainly quite a bit more expensive than the Asus. So when you compare all of these options together, the Asus is actually looking really good, and at least for me personally, it uh, doesn't really have any major compromises for that lower price, uh, apart from the plastic build quality versus something like the you know, aluminium Pro Display XDR. But overall, I have really enjoyed using this monitor over the last few weeks. Just being able to have that big 32 inch workspace with almost perfect color accuracy and having that super sharp 6K resolution. So you know, basically identical to the retina resolution on my MacBook. And sure, you know, the ports on the back aren't groundbreaking, but you know, they cover the basics. You know, you get your full one cable MacBook connectivity with a few extra ports for some accessories, which is going to be enough for most users. But mostly I just think the price is really competitive, especially when you compare it to other options out there from other brands, even including Apple. Like if you want that 32 inch 6K experience, Again, this monitor just doesn't really compromise in any area apart from the black plastic. Um, and it's gonna be hundreds of dollars or potentially thousands of dollars cheaper than all of the competition out there currently. Now, if you'd like something a little bit smaller and quite a bit cheaper than this, uh, you can check out this guy's little brother, the ASUS ProArt PA27JCV. And you can watch my review on that monitor by clicking this little box right here.